Good morning, Munir Ajam. Um, we're going to record this video in English and in Arabic, so now the English version. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about major projects or large and complex or capital project, regardless what you call them. And we're going to talk about failures and success, and or maybe my favorite quotation, the good, the bad, and the ugly, when it comes to managing these type of projects. Now, typically, we might call these projects as also as capital projects, because they are usually capital investment, and could be engineering, construction, or it could be technology. Uh, any major project, and what we say major, usually in the millions or hundreds of millions, and if we use the term mega project, we are typically talking about hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in investment. Um, I'm going to start with basically with the ugly or with the uh, bad news, good news kind of an approach. Um, the, the bad news and when it comes to these type of projects uh, is that obviously with a large degree of complexity, um, they are harder to manage than maybe simpler, straightforward, well-defined small projects or even medium-sized projects. So the degree of complexity is quite high. And whether in terms of technology complexity or in terms of organizational complexity or just size and logistics and supply chains um, um, or site location. So there, there could be uh, many, many type of complexities that exist on these type of project uh, that results in less than optimal solution or even failure. Um, this is basically more of a just general description of these projects. Now, let's start with some of the bad news. And research, you know, uh, for example, maybe two, three years ago, there was a research paper at Oxford University um, Business Schools, uh, the project management program, that shows, uh, uh, that was done on technology project. And when they're talking about technology in here, they're talking about large capital technology project that are usually over $100 million dollars. Uh, an investment. And what they found out is when it comes to large technology projects, uh, the, uh, on, average, on average, these projects uh, experience significant delays and in the cost they experience on average about 200% overrun. Now you want to research, uh, obviously uh, in this video it's hard for me to put the links, but if you go to the Oxford University or Price Waterhouse, I think they were involved. Uh, in this uh, study, uh, you can find these articles uh, that document the situation. Some of those projects, we said on average 200%, some of those projects almost caused the bankruptcies uh, of some global organization or uh, at least international organization um, that are quite large and massive. So they were not only the project failures are bad, uh, it, they also significantly affected the companies. Obviously, when you are dealing with a huge investment like this, um, you know, cost overrun on mega project or large project can have significant impact on the bottom line. Uh, other studies, uh, basically, uh, also from Oxford Universities, I'm going to stay with Oxford University for a minute, um, because they do a lot of, uh, in their project management program, they have a lot of focus on the large mega project. Uh, they also report significant problem with infrastructure project uh, and uh, also Olympic projects uh, and among others. Now, I don't have, in this video, I'm not going to get into the research. Obviously, you can go to these universities or these uh, references and, and do more research. But basically, the highlight, then when it comes to these type of large complex projects, whether they are technology, uh, capital projects, uh, engineering construction, infrastructures, or Olympic type of project, uh, they probably, these type of projects are suffering the most. Also, um, uh, IPA is an organization that called Independent Project Analysis that does research on capital project, and they have a huge database of thousands of projects. Uh, they also find that for capital project, and this is, in this case, we're talking about engineering construction, uh, mega project is that uh, many projects, especially if the organization do not follow proper methodology uh, or especially a stage gate approach, they can expect up to 45% loss, or, so let me be clear here on the language, and we've recorded on this before, 
not a loss, but basically a reduction, maybe the better word, in their net present value. So basically, if the project uh, was estimated to give, us, to give the company a $100 million profit, they see up to 45% reduction in that, which is significant. Uh, you know, 100% um, uh, on a billion dollar or a $100 million project, 45% is $45 million. Uh, and if it's a billion dollar expected profit or net present value, you can expect the numbers to go significantly high. You know, maybe sometime more than the capital, more than the uh, GDP for a small nation. Um, uh, IPA data showed, as we mentioned, if you are not following a proper methodology, you can expect up to 45% reduction. Now, this is, could be as a result of cost and schedule problem, or could be a result of maybe less than, less than optimal, let's put it that way, uh, feasibility studies or proper market studies. If these organizations follow some kind of methodology, but not that well, they can experience up to 22% reduction in their net present value. So, Oxford University is telling us uh, mega project, a large project based on actual research of project are not doing well. IPA is sharing us some data with us on this. Um, now, let's move away from this, you know, because sometimes people argue, said, look, well, you know, these companies are maybe interested in selling services. Like you, Sukad, you might be interested in selling services. Yes, of course, we are interested in selling services. Uh, but... You know, it's not like uh, you know want to sell, sell services over um, on your account. Basically, uh, uh, you know, whatever services we sell, it probably be a fraction of the cost that we can save you. So this is maybe an important message to to point like this. Uh, but again, let's move away from this and go to media. Media reports over the last few weeks you know in the gcc for example we've seen more than one report in the papers and unfortunately the paper do not explain much but at least they report at least you know in one week period i noticed there are two mega project each one of them is a billion dollars which is roughly you know 3.7 3.6 3.4 billion dirham maybe uh project are experiencing as much as two years delay and again i'm not going to go into too much detail here just go back to some previous blogs and some videos we have talked about these things um, and some of these projects are high visibility like the Guggenheim Museum in Abu Dhabi um, a major mall uh, here just a few days ago there was also a report about uh, this uh, big building that's happening in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia which is going to be supposedly the tallest building in the world superseding uh, Burj Khalifa um, they were uh, announced up to I don't know how many years delay on the project. It started construction in 2014. It was supposed to be three year, then it become four years, and now the plan is it will not finish before 2019. So at least now it has become a five year project. Uh, so two years delay on the original schedule. Um, so there are a lot of bad news. Okay, now what the good news? And maybe here we're, you know, again, we could be accused of selling services, so be it. On the good news, okay, um, I'm going to share some data as well. And I'm going to go back to IPA, the Independent Project Analysis data. And, and this article they wrote, as we mentioned, if you do not follow a, any methodology or proper methodology, you can expect up to 45% reduction in net present value. This is for project owner. And if you follow some kind of methodological approach, stage gate approach, but maybe not very well, you can experience up to 22% reduction on average. Actually, the 22% was the average reduction in net present value. However, the good news is, if you follow a good stage gate approach, methodological approach for managing project as owner, you can expect an increase in the net present value. So here you have a choice is that either experience up to 45% a reduction in net present value uh, or do a good project management and follow a good approach and gain 5%. So that's almost basically, uh, it means the double the performance from almost a 50%, 50 delta uh, from the mean. So basically, uh, again, it's like 100 million. You expect at your feasibility to make profit uh, reality is you'll achieve only 55 million if you don't follow a good process or you will achieve 105 if you follow a good process. 
Uh, I'm going to shift to CII, the Construction Industry Institute, and they have a set of best practices, and they tell us clearly, if you follow their best practices, you know, any single one of them, if you do it properly, you can expect at least 1% to 2% improvement in performance on your projects. So uh, in change management, for example, if you don't follow a proper change management system or process, you can expect up to a 10% reduction on uh, your project cost. Uh, I mean, uh, an overrun, a hit of about 10%, up to 10% on your project capital cost. Well, as if you follow a good change management process, you can expect savings up to 2 to 3%. So again, it's a huge delta here uh, between a loss of a 10% to a gain of 2 to 3%. So the delta is not 2 to 3% only, 2 to 3% on the plus side, but if you comp compare to the negative part. Um, and again, there are many other studies uh, that have shown. I personally, I have been involved in mega projects as well, and I've had the opportunity to, like my two big, biggest mega projects I was involved in or with about 20 plus years ago. One of them was considered from a project management perspective a success. Another one was a failure. Why? And I do a presentation on comparing these two mega projects I was involved with. It was clear in my uh, own observation and experience and based on my own research and uh, other factors, the key differences between success and failure was the project management maturity. Now, what do I mean by this? Meaning one organization follow a good project management system, whereas the other organization uh, using common sense to manage non-common sense projects, um, complex projects. So the challenge is that uh, obviously, whether we go to research by leading organization, my own personal observation, papers in the media, uh, there are successes and failures. And unfortunately, failures are not often discussed. They are usually hidden or, you know, unless a company like in the West, uh, they publish report. Uh, like I was just reading an article about the U.S. Gulf Coast and the oil and gas. They are also suffering over there project-wise, uh, and they are compared to a project that is successful. And, and unless a company is a public company, you know, they don't have to report on their project, usually met many companies are going to publicize or discuss openly their failures and leading project. Now, why uh, this project fails? Again, based on this article that was published a few days ago for the U.S. Gulf Coast, so it's not the GCC, is uh, methodologies, uh, consistent approach, proper planning, and things like this are the leading factor um, in uh, causing project to fail or project to suffer and cause a lot of pain. Well, I don't know how many executives would be listening to this video and how many of them have lost sleep over some of the mega projects they are handling. They are good news. Uh, and the good news is uh, the conclusion of some of these articles and research that we have done is that organization, yeah, especially maybe this is applicable more for the GCC region, for where we are, is that owner organization should invest in project management and manage their project directly. I know I had more than one video on this before, talk about owner-led versus PMC or general contractor-led. Again, the research shows, and this is based on thousands of projects from IPA, for example, and we had quoted this article before, is that owner will do a better job in managing their own project, and they see better results in managing their own project versus depending on outsourcing through PMCs or depending on their engineering consultant and contractors. Okay, that's one fact. The other fact from based on research is that uh, owner, to be able to manage their projects directly, they have to build capacity and competence in project management in this organization, meaning they have to invest into a building a project management system in their organization that covers corporate knowledge base, lessons learned, governance, policies, uh, change management, risk management, uh, all of these has to be built into a comprehensive, sustainable, organizational project management system. 
This is something we in Sukkot have been advertising and publicly talking about for a while. And of course, yes, we are trying to sell a service and here, no shame in that. Um, so, owner can do a better job in managing their project directly. To do so, they have to build their organizational project management system. As part of their organizational project management system, they should have a methodological, well-defined methodology for managing larger and complex project or a mega project that is a stage gate based or follow a stage gate approach um, basically to make, to make sure they assess and evaluate their project at their progress even from the early steps from as soon as the concept of the project is being formalized to the feasibility study to the requirements uh, and what CII and IPA called front end loading which means before engineering and even before the project is approved and funded. So by the time the organization reached the decision to make or approve a project uh, um, after the front end loading or after preliminary engineering and preliminary planning, they should be absolutely sure that these projects are well studied. Now, if we follow these simple rules, okay, manage your own project directly, build your own organizational system, develop your own stage gate methodological approach, yeah, and uh, go ahead. Does it mean they will not see failures? Of course, nobody is saying that. However, what we are saying is we can definitely see improvement in performance. Uh, and again, I'm gonna use the number from IPA in this case, okay, from 45% reduction in your net present value to plus 5%. This is one study. CII, I gave you numbers before. For example, a given uh, best practice could make a difference between five to 10% uh, hit on, on, uh, on your project up to maybe two to 3% uh, on the plus side for each major best practice that you implement. Um, we end with this and uh, we hope, we hope, we are able to make the message clear uh, and promote the concept for project organization, especially project owner organization, to embrace project management. Don't be afraid of project management. Project management could make a huge difference to you as an organization and to your revenue and to your profits and to your customer satisfaction and stakeholders and your shareholder, whether they are individual, uh, companies and private companies or their government owned regardless. Proper project management is getting to the point where it's becoming a must that you cannot ignore. Have a great day.